Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we're going to talk about the Second Battle of Manassas, also known as the Second Battle Bull Run, that occurred in Prince William County, Virginia on August 28th to the 30th, 1862. Welcome back to Part 2, the Second Battle Bull Run. During the fighting of August 29th, Pope's focus had been completely on Stonewall Jackson and his forces. He had ignored General James Longstreet and his men in the thoroughfare gap, and didn't seem to notice that General Robert E. Lee himself had shown up for the Confederates with his own troops. Using this free time, Lee ordered Confederate General Longstreet to form up on Jackson's right flank, extending the Confederate line by more than a mile and allowing the Confederate troops to wrap around the Union lines exposing the Union flank. On the morning of August 30th, Pope decided to press his advantage and attack what was known as the Deep Cut. He took more than 10,000 men and rushed it, The troops were unleashed fully after 3 p.m., and as they crossed the area, the Confederate soldiers, who were safely behind the railroad embankments, sent volley after volley of shot into the Union soldiers. To top this all off, Confederate artillery began to rain in on the Union troops. After 30 minutes of a bloodbath, the Union troops began pulling back with extremely heavy losses. Pope's failure at this assault doomed the rest of the battle. Seeing the success of the men, Commander Lee ordered Longstreet to sweep down and attack the Union flank. More than 30,000 Confederate soldiers swept down into the Union lines, sweeping all Union resistance until they reached Chin Ridge. Union General Pope, in a desperate bid to stop the collapse of his troops, threw together what he could to stop the Confederates, or at least to slow Longstreet down enough for him to pull the rest of his troops off the field. In a desperate bid, Pope kept throwing units into the ridge, doing anything he could to slow that push. Meanwhile, Longstreet kept calling up reserves to replace the men he was losing. Pope maintained his defenses until after 6 p.m. when he realized he'd been able to pull back to Henry Hill and form a better defense. Longstreet, believing he could push the Union lines and break it, threw his men into Henry Hill. The attack was too late, though, as darkness fell and the battle had ended. Pope and the Union had lost badly, in what was probably the worst loss of the war so far. He pulled his men back in the middle of the night and retreated to where McClellan's army had arrived to meet up with them. Pope was ordered a week later to give up his command and go to Minnesota and to fight the Native American tribes there. His war with the Confederacy was over for now at least. The Confederacy ended this battle at the best position so far in the war. However, even with the Union's suffering, their largest defeat, they were still a threat. The total casualties were enormous for the time. The Confederacy suffered approximately 7,300 casualties with a combined 1,100 killed, 6,200 wounded. The Union, who had the worst end of the stick, suffered 14,500 casualties over the three days, including 1,750 killed, 8,450 wounded, and more than 4,260 men captured or missing. The toll of this battle was just a signal what was coming later in the war. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.